Hi, my name's John Pearce. I'm a lecturer at the University of Nottingham, and I'm the creator of PsychPy. In this demo, I'll show you how to build a simple experiment in PsychPy, but we're going to use the Stroop effect. When you first start up PsychPy, you'll find two windows come open. One is the Builder view, which allows you to construct your experiments graphically. And the other is the Coder view, which allows you to create your experiments using Python scripts if you prefer to write code directly. Today we're going to be using the Builder view. The Builder view has three panels. It's got components, it's got one or more routines. Here we've got a single routine called the trial. And it's got a flow which allows you to combine multiple routines together. In the case of the Stroop task, we'll need a text object as part of our trial because we need to present a word to the subject. So let's create a text object. We'll call it target. We'll have it start at maybe 0.5 seconds and it will last for five seconds. Notice that each of these parameters, as I hover my mouse over them, it gives me a tip to inform me about what I would be expected to include. There's also a help button. If I click on that, uh, I'll go to the PsychoPy website where it will tell me more detailed information about how to use this particular component. For now, we're not going to set the color and the text of this uh, text object. We'll come back to that later on. Having hit OK, we can see the text object appearing in our routine. And if we want to edit that, we can click on the icon again and we can get back and change our stimulus. Maybe we want it to be for four seconds instead of for five. So it's now changed that representation. We also, for the Stroop task, need the subjects to respond. So let's add a keyboard to this routine. We'll call it response. We'll also start that at 0.5 seconds. We don't want subjects to respond before the target was presented. I'm going to set this to have a, an infinite duration. If we set that to be blank, then the keyboard will be available forever. We're going to leave the allowed keys for now. I'll come back and change those later on once we set up our trials. OK. Now we can see that the response is going to last forever. So that's roughly what one trial is going to look like in the Stroop task. But we need to run more than one trial. And right now we've got that routine appearing just once on our flow. Let's insert a loop around the trial so that we can repeat it. If I click on Insert Loop just once, and then select again with a single click where we want our loop to start and stop. It brings up a dialog box asking me what do I want to call this loop. We'll call it trials, that's fine. Should it be random or sequential in choosing the next condition? Random is fine. We'll have five repeats. Um, and we need to go and specify a conditions file. Now you'll notice here it's asking for a trial, a file that's CSV or XLSX. We need to go off to Excel in order to create our file. And click OK. You'll see it insert the loop around the trial. Let's go and save that experiment now so that we don't lose it. Save. I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop called Stroop. And maybe I'll call the file Stroop experiment. OK. The easiest way to define the conditions for your experiment is to use a spreadsheet package like Excel. We can create a number of parameters for our experiment, such as the word that we're going to present, or the color that it will be presented in. And we can create a number of different conditions. We specify one on each row. So for the Stroop task, we might use the word red, written in red. We might have the word red written in green. We might have the word green written in green, etc. Green in blue, 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 
blue and red. I'm going to keep track of whether or not those are congruent. We don't really need to do this. We can always work it out later, but it's kind of convenient to have that stored as well. So congruent, I'm going to say 1, that means true, and 0 for false. That's just going to help us later on. Now we also need to specify what's the correct answer, because PsychoPy will want to know whether or not the subject got it right or wrong. I'm going to call that cor ants. These parameters can't use any punctuation or spaces in their names. So I'm going to take away the space and give a capital letter for uh, to specify the correct answer. Now in this case we're going to use the left, down and right cursor keys from the keyboard. So I'm going to specify that red and remember in the Stroop task that the subjects are asked to report the, the colour of the text rather than the word itself. So when the colour is red, I'm going to ask the subjects to press left. That's the left cursor key. When it's green, they should press down. Down again. When the colour's blue, they should press right. Right. And now I've got red again, so they should press left. OK, that defines six different conditions for our experiment with four different parameters. OK, let's save that file. I'm going to put it in the same folder as my experiment, although you don't have to. And I'm going to call it conditions.xlsx. It's very important that you save it in the xlsx format. Psychopy can't use the old xls style spreadsheets. Click save, and we're done. So now we need to show Psychopy where that file is and how to use it during the trials. The way to do that is with the loop dialog. So if I just click on that loop again, we'll get the properties back for the loop. And there's a conditions file. If we browse, we can select our file that we've just created open that and it's told me that there are six conditions with four different parameters the parameters color word congruent correct answer okay if the file had been invalid in some way maybe we had a space in one of our column headings then we would get a warning here to say that we couldn't use that file or it wouldn't it wouldn't show us that the parameters were there now we can select okay and it's showing that we've got five times six random trials, so five different repeats of six different conditions. Okay, so the conditions file is now being set here and on each repeat through the loop we use a different row. But we still need to tell the stimulus about the parameters that it needs to use. We want the colour of our stimulus to be set by that colour parameter. Now, I've typed in dollar colour here um, spelt with the U because that's what we, how we spelt it in the Excel file. And that dollar sign is to tell PsychoPy this isn't a literal value, it's a variable. Okay, So it's going to go off and find a variable called color and see what the current value of that variable is. It's going to be red or green or blue. I'm also going to set that to change on every repeat rather than being constant. Okay, We don't want the stimulus just to be fixed to one particular colour for the entire experiment. Similarly, the text of this text stimulus should be the word that we've specified in the Excel file. And it shouldn't be word, it should be the variable word in order to go and fetch that variable which is going to be red or green or blue. And again, we want that to change on every repeat of this routine. OK. Okay, we also need to set the response to be based on the conditions. So I need to change the keys that are going to be allowed for the subject to respond with. We don't want them to use the, the, the yes or the no. We want them to use left, right and down. So notice that any keys that I want to put here I separate by commas and 
I have to put inverted commas around the name of each of the keys. If I leave that blank, the, the entire box, then all keys will be available. Okay, so that, that allows the subject to press any key. I've also got force end routine checked here. We left the response to be infinite, but as soon as they press any key, it will force the end of that trial. So that's a useful thing for us to do. We also go on to store correct. So if I check that box, we have to tell Psychopy what is the correct answer on this trial. And if you remember, that was stored as cor ants. Again, we need to use dollar cor ants to specify the fact that this is a variable name, not it shouldn't be looking for a key called cor ants because it will never find one. It's got to use the variable cor ants. And that's us done. OK. Save. OK, we're pretty much there. That should be a working experiment. But we do also want to provide the subject with some instructions. I'm going to insert another routine into the flow. When I click that button, it shows me either new or trial. Let's select new, and I'll call it instructions, if I can spell it. Instructions. That It asks where I want to insert the instructions. We don't want it to be here because that would repeat the instructions on every trial. Let's put it before the loop. And now we can click on the instructions routine and we can edit that. So we're going to want another text object. We're going to call that, say, instra text. Start at time zero. Duration will make it infinite. Color white, that's fine. And we'll give it the text. Remember, you choose the color of the letters, ignoring the word. Colon left equals red, down equals green, right equals blue. OK. Now because we made that text last forever, we gave it an infinite duration, we need to make sure that the subject can get rid of them. So we'll click on a keyboard, we'll allow any key, we'll force the end of the routine, and we won't bother storing anything. We make that last forever. OK. If you do get that wrong, you can, should always be able to hit escape and you will still be able to quit the, the experiment without having to restart your computer. OK, I'm going to save that again. I think we're done. OK, let's just have a quick look at the experiment settings dialog box. In this dialog, you can control things like whether or not the mouse is visible during the experiment, the, the colour of the background of the screen, whether or not it's in a window or in full screen, uh, is it screen one or screen two if you've got multiple monitors, and what sort of data files you want to save out. So lots of useful things there to control your experiment. Now at this point we could construct a script that'll allow you to go off and maybe learn a little bit, bit about how Python works. Um, it's about 220 lines long this particular experiment, so not too complicated a script. But we don't need to. We could actually go off and run our experiment by hitting the green man. Often takes a few seconds, especially the first time you run. Uh, so be patient with that one. There we go. We've got a dialog box card asking for the participant and the session number. That was also being controlled in the experiment settings dialog. I'm not actually going to run the experiment. I'll leave that to you. OK, hope you found that useful. Check out the demos menu for more ideas, and I hope you enjoy using Psychopath.